there's a lot of players. Yeah. A lot of players. Remember, they, they draft. Understand. They draft very well. They so they'll pick up a couple of nice high-end starters this year. Packers Steelers have always drafted and developed at a really high level. I think you've got the Packers and the Steelers in the Super Bowl, right? No, but I think they're. <laughs> I think just say it out loud. Look at this roster. Look at Russell. Not a lot of holes. Any, anytime anybody says, but I don't like their corners outside of Kansas City and the Jets. Does anybody like anybody's corners? There's a corner shortage in pro football. Don't don't. I didn't like San Francisco's. They got to the Super Bowl. I, corners, I'm not interested. Four or five of the best corners play on four or five of the worst teams. I don't care about corners. I care about quarterbacks, left tackle, edge rusher, head coach. Can you protect the quarterback? You got playmakers on the outside. I don't care about corners. Safeties and corners. I can live with average ones. All right. I'm all fired up. Indeed. All fired. By the way, that dynasty, that New England, that, that dog on Apple TV. Oh, my God. Episode, so I need to watch episode four is one of the best 50 minutes I've ever watched of sports documents. <laughs> ever. In any sports doc ever, episode four of that. Buy it for that. Episode one's excellent. Two and three are okay. Four is great. I mean, it is crazy good. Binge Patriot stuff on the week. Oh, I spent. I was out in New England area, so it kind of got me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be sure to catch five editions of the herd weekdays at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, on Fox Sports Radio, FS1, and the. Yeah, you're right. When you're an American Express company, there's nothing you can say about anybody in any business. Uh, that's better than he helped others, and Peter certainly did. So we'll bring him on. Peter King, the legend, uh, a first ballot Hall of Fame guy who I think has a Hall of Fame vote. If I, yeah, he should. If not, he does. Um, so Albert Breer said um, a framework for a Justin Fields trade, Bears quarterback, could be in place this week. So the bones of it are happening this week. Can we all now finally just admit all this? Bears are keeping Justin Fields. Rumors was all just to keep his trade value. value high. If Chicago bailed on Justin Fields in week eight or nine, what would he be worth today? I mean, the guy hasn't had multiple touchdowns passes in a game since week five, and they run out of their way. Even when they miss Chase Claypool, DJ Moore, they got him another tight end, a lot of draft capital on the O-line. You can't keep blaming the Bears. They went and got some good pieces. Uh, yeah, Bryce Young, he doesn't have anything to work with. Justin Fields' O-line is middle of the pack. His final seven games this year, five touchdowns, three picks. Completion percentage around 60%. A passer rating in the low 80s against mostly lousy teams. But the Bears smartly would go out and say, very smartly, it's a very tough choice for us. We like what we see. We see somebody who's getting better. I don't, but I understand the game plan. It's year three. His passing numbers are flat. His running numbers have gone down. We can put it on the screen for you. So, and again, they've added pieces. The Chicago Bears aren't perfect. Chase Claypool did not work. I appreciated the effort. DJ Moore's an excellent, absolute, bona fide number one receiver. Cole Komet, very fine type. The O-line's fine. And for the record, he doesn't win a lot of games. And that's a problem. Don't listen to the analytic nerds. Good quarterbacks win close games. He is a dreadful fourth quarter quarterback, the worst in the league. Chicago media, their opinion of him is just not reality. Everybody all season, the Chicago media all season long tried to uh, defend him, uh, elevate him, uh, protect him, promote him. Maybe they're watching Ohio State film. But if you look at his second half stats in his career, third and fourth quarter, so this is when you're off script. Now it's up to you. No more script. It's up to you. Three years, his career, second half stats, 77 passer rating, 58% career completion percentage. You know what that is? The guy I keep comparing him to, Zach Wilson. But New York media never defends Zach Wilson. They call it as they see it, as they should. I respect that. Chicago media, this guy deserves another year. He is in the second half. Zach Wilson. Highlight uh, tape, moves pretty well, good arm. Not efficient, not accurate, off script, very limited. The New York media calls it the truth. The Chicago media has been protecting him and buying into this. We really like him. Stop it. Come on. You're not hoisting a trophy. Caleb Williams is way... Wait, Drake May. If there was no Caleb Williams, Drake May's too talented to pass on, in my opinion. But the bones are in the work, according to Albert Greer, as they should be. I don't have a problem with him getting an offensive culture somewhere in the league. I don't have a problem with him getting a really good offensive coordinator wherever it is. But the Chicago thing, stop trying to tell me something that's not there. Efficiency late in games and in the second half off script. He's Zach Wilson. That's what he is. The numbers don't lie. And by the way, the NFC is weaker than the AFC. So I can defend Zach Wilson. He's got Buffalo, he's got Belichick, he's got... You can't have those numbers in the second half in the NFC. Can't. Brock Purdy's lighting it up. Can't. Jay Mack with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news! This is the Herd Line News. Hey, let's start.
start with everybody's favorite coach, Andy Reid. He's expected to begin negotiations on a new contract extension after they won the Super Bowl. Um, he's probably going to be the highest paid coach in the league. A lot of rumors he could retire and step oh, down. Peter King, I don't know if you read the full column yet, but he said he, he didn't love how, like, after they won the Super Bowl, he's like, so are you going to retire? And Andy Reid goes, are you? <laughs> uh, and so I don't know. Listen, Andy Reid's back, you know? First of all, excite Andy Reid. Like, I understand certain people in certain industries that retire. You're lifting stuff. Or you don't love the job, but you're pretty good at it. You don't love it. Maybe uh, the industry's kind of shrinking. Like, I understand people who retire. Or maybe you just have a love of travel. You love hanging out with your wife. You love to golf. Whatever. I get that. But this business is growing. Mahomes is in his prime. And Andy's a creator. Andy's not grumpy. He's not a defensive coach where it's all about don't fumble. Play the right way. Andy is an artist. He is a creator. He is a play designer and a play caller. He loves working with young people and developing talent. Those are the kind of people that generally don't retire early. 66 next month. But again, a lively, smart, twitchy 66. Who you know, loves energy, a good burger and a good time. The energy and the time spent to be a football coach. You know, we always talk about this. The league is worse off if it loses Brady or Manning. The league is not as good without Andy Reid. Oh, I, let's not. Andy Reid makes the games great. I mean, Andy Reid is one of the most clever big game coaches in my life. What's this is what a coach is made to do. I'm not saying the ratings are going down, but I'm saying there are people in this league that matter. I'm watching that Patriots dynasty thing. Ernie Adams' retirement is the start of the downfall, and nobody knows who Ernie Adams is outside of New England. Like, Andy okay. Reid leaving is not good for the sport. So, it's, he so, is uh, a clever, clever. He's also one of these guys where all of his assistants work. He is creating great coaches all through the league. So I'll disagree. So if McVay had left for television and announced it, that would have been really bad. The Rams are McVay and Stafford. We see Stafford without any league coaching right. in Detroit. Okay, I don't want to see the Rams. Without Andy Reid, I still think Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to be an awesome show. Because I don't know that they're going to be Super Bowl favorites every year, but they're certainly in the top four, even without Andy Reid. No, I, I, yeah. I mean, I think <coughs> Mahomes is more important. Andy Reid was, was getting to Super Bowls and dominating the NFC, getting to NFC championships every other year with B quarterbacks. When the NFC was the better conference, when the NFC was the AFC, had all the star quarterbacks, yeah. and he was getting there with a B quarterback. Imagine somebody now getting to the AFC championship with a B quarterback. You can't do it anymore. You can't get there. So was the last B quarterback Mark I mean, Sanchez? Burrow, Allen, Lamar. You, you, you can't, the AFC right now is like the NFC. During Andy's time, he had all these great quarterbacks. Get Aaron in his prime. Uh oh, oh uh, in the AFC, yeah. yeah, I mean, he Case was getting Keenum. like B quarterbacks to the NFC Championship. Case Keenum with the Vikings, I think it was. He got to the NFC Championship. That was probably the weakest quarterback in the NFC, the NFC Conference Championship. Andy's yeah, really important. I'm not saying it's vital to the league's success. They'll be fine without anybody. Yeah. Mahomes could retire tomorrow. The league would be fine. But he has added a lot of elements. He has created this group, this chain of just one after another of really good young coaches. Yeah. Well, I know you like Matt Nagy, so I won't go. I do uh, like Matt Nagy. You do. You're the guy. Trubisky to the playoffs twice. Ooh. Awesome. All right, let's go to the Lakers, Colin. I know you're fired up about this. So the Lakers lose to the Suns yesterday, and man, the free throw disparity was a problem. LeBron complained. Every Laker complained. The Suns shot 19 free throws. The Lakers attempted eight. Zero in the second half. LeBron was fired up after. A lot of coaches, a lot of teams, like, that's all the Lakers do is get to the free throw line. There's, like, this narrative out there that that's all we do is get to the free throw line. I mean, we have attackers. That's what we do. I mean, we, we have attackers here. We shoot the ball from the, from the perimeter. We're not shooting 40, 50 threes a day. We're not that team. We don't have the luxury of being that team. So, you know, we're getting to the, you know, to the paint. That's what we're really good at. So, you know, you know, to have the freaking attempts is definitely not us. I, mean, I, uh, I know definitely. I hit a couple times going on to the paint tonight. You know, that wasn't called, but it is what it is. I appreciate LeBron willing to talk about it, but he doesn't duck. We got to remember this. Not every NBA star is great. LeBron's always up there telling you what he thinks. Like I like, I didn't think it was the best officiated game in league history, but it's <laughs> this happens. You get into these games where you start shooting perimeter shots, you're not attacking the basket. Maybe your guys aren't. I mean, it just there are free throw disparities all the time in this league, and I think it's not because the yeah, I'm sure the league said let's punish the most popular player and the biggest brand in the league. You know, you know, I've watched football games in your life. You start watching like Super Bowls. Historically, they don't throw a lot of flat. By the way, the Chiefs don't get called for holding in the Super Bowl. Right, right, right. And you say to yourself. Well, they're just rooting. No, the Super Bowl, the league basically knows we're going to double our audience. Let's keep the flags in the pockets unless it's egregious. Let's let the players decide the game. But I'll, I'll just say this. Anthony Davis played 42 minutes and did not attempt to first five. That's rare. But that's rare. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the Suns don't have a big guy. Now, I'm sure people will say this was put a pushback earlier in the season. The shoe was on the other foot or whatever this is saying is. Um, I'm not concerned about the Lakers yet, Colin, but if they're in the plane, the 9-10 game, they'll win the game. 
I'll guarantee you that they, they want so to. They, they they're play. Built, they're built for urgent, important games. They they're not built for the playing the Golden State Warriors yeah. in a season over if you lose. And if AD turns an ankle, let's, 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 let's slow down. This game's a long way out. We got 30 some games. 24 games left in the season. Is that it? Yeah, that game, the season's flying. And once March Madness starts, people like the NBA season just speeds up. Ah, I feel like. It's amazing there's only 24. Listen, I, I know this is a Lakers topic, but um, have you I, done any Kevin Durant stuff this week, like just focusing on Durant and no, what's going on? No, what's going on? What's happening? He's, he's had some stuff's happening with this. I think we're going to be talking about it. What, what, time out. What does that mean? Well, we, you know, we got into it with the fan. The fan, that lady no, said that, that inappropriate thing. Way out of the line. Yeah. Fan and then Barkley, way Barkley and, the, and the guys were trolling Durant again. He's not a leader. Um, and what? Durant had another spotty game yesterday what, against what, the Lakers. What are you hearing? Just say it. Well, he's, he's turning 36 soon. Yeah. And he, he hasn't done jack squat since leaving the Warriors. He failed miserably with the Nets. Somebody said he had more trade defense than playoff series wins with the Nets, <laughs> which is a fact. Come on. And now the Suns are like looking like they're going to be a play-in team with Booker, Beal, and KD. And I know Beal's always hurt. But if KD doesn't get out of the play-in come, I don't want to hear this. Why am I not talking about him? One of the greatest players in league history. He's, he's, fair. he's doing that. No, it's fair. Nobody's had more stacked decks than Kevin Durant. Look at all his teams. It's all superstars. The criticism of him that feels reasonably fair. I don't view him as a great leader. I vote him as a great ball. Okay, what's a good leader? Time out. I need to know. Uh, a leader is LeBron James leads. He's always there for the press. He can be defiant. He's not passive aggressive. If he's pissed, he'll tell you. Um, that's what I've always said about Aaron Rodgers. Great talent. I'm not sure he's a great leader. Kevin Durant, great talent. I'm not sure he's a great leader. Uh, Peyton Manning would bark at a teammate. Peyton Manning would bark on the sidelines. Brady would do that. Leadership is hard. Mahomes will bark at a teammate, will bark at Andy Reid, will bark at it. That's leadership. Kobe would bark. I think Kevin is a little like Aaron. I think he's a smart guy. He's brilliant. He's an all-timer. A little passive-aggressive, not really confrontational, uh, a little bit of rabbit ears. Doesn't mean you're not a first ballot guy. Both of them are. But there's leadership is, is hard to define. We talked to Jimmy Johnson about it. What is leadership? I don't know it, but I kind of know it when I see it. And I think that criticism of Durant, because I think he's an all-time player. I love Durant's game. Well, I think he's the best. I told you, they had a one-on-one -on -one tournament league history. Durant wins it. You know, that's all the team sport. Beats LeBron, beats Jordan, beats Curry, beats everybody. But leadership, it's not really what he's about. And that's his thing. He says, I just want to move. I just want to move. You know what? Sometimes you got to be a leader. You want to win? You want to be historically great? you got to be a leader. That's what the greats are. No? Well, no, Jordan no. leader, LeBron leader. I mean, I, people may not want to hear it. Steph Curry is a leader. More yes. of a leader than Kevin Durant's ever been. And I like Kevin Durant a lot. Colin, we both like Kevin Durant a lot. But I, I don't view him as that. Kawhi Leonard to me is not a great not leader. He's a great player. It's okay. Not every not everybody not everybody's a great leader. Some some guys are just athletes and that's what they are. They love their family, they love their football or basketball. They don't want to lead. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, final story, this is a tough one. Uh, so Cam Newton got involved in an altercation at a youth football event over the weekend. Uh, punches were thrown. Looks like he got jumped by three guys. Now, listen, I don't want to go overboard here. I've had some beef with Cam lately. Obviously not in tears. It's kind of disrespectful. It's a seven on seven game. Cam Newton shows up at a seven on seven game. Doesn't he deserve a little respect? Well, but Cam Newton has other things, things to do. And we gotta be careful. We don't know if he was playing peacemaker or what was that. We don't know all the details. Nothing has really come out. But bottom line is security and stuff. It's not a great look when a bunch of dudes are coming at Cam. Cam six five two forty. What the fuck? He's got like a, a death wish if you're attacking. This no, but I mean it's just I don't see this happening when other NFL stars go to seven on seven games. This is probably the third time. Yes, and that's I have seen Cam Newton at a camp and kids talk trash to him. Like I, just, I don't know what it is for Cam. But I saw a video like two years ago, and these little like nine-year-olds yeah. were calling him out, and I'm like, excuse me? He was playing. He'd be like an MVP two years earlier. I don't know. I just, this isn't, and again, I, I don't know what it is with Cam that he yeah. ignites this. I don't know Why what are people is. coming for him all the time? You know what's funny about him? I mean, Cam's obviously, you know, as a player, he's oh. a little in the camp, a little distracted.